Okay, we are here. Um, Jackie is not, everyone else is here. Okay. Um, number three is consider and accept GenGov some committee minutes of February 21st. Did you have, anybody get them when I sent them? Anybody have comments or questions on them or corrections? Honestly, I read everything else. You sent them? Yeah, I sent them a few days ago. Oh, wait, we can go. It's my best. Do you want to do you want to read what happened? Yeah. Good yes. You know what? It wasn't in my phone. That's why. Okay. Oh, that's why. Because I read the whole list of that. I wasn't thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Item number four is review and discuss the town manager's appointment of Lani Creasia. If I am I pronouncing that correctly? Lani Creasia. Creasia, okay, thank you. Thank Lani Creasia. As treasurer collector for an indefinite term effective immediately. And I assume that must be you. Hi. Welcome aboard. Thank you Hi. very much. Do um, you have anything you want to say, Adriana? Sure, thank you for you. Um, so, Lani has over 21 years of municipal experience. Uh, during her career, she's held various roles in different departments. She started her vocation as a treasurer in 2017 and has been advancing in that field since then. She's in her last year of Massachusetts Treasure Collector School and has attended various courses and classes and anticipates to have her certification within the next year. She comes highly recommended from a former chair board of selectmen from the town of Brookfield that knew her in her treasurer capacity. Uh, we, the interview panel that uh, is unanimously recommending her for the position consisted of the treasurer collector, the interim treasurer collector, the former town accountant, finance director, the, the interim town manager, the HR specialist, and the assistant town manager, HR director. Okay. Anybody have comments or questions? One. Um, through you. Good. Um, what made you interested in the position in South Ridge? Well, it was actually a funny story. Um, I was at a VMMA conference and, um, in the morning having breakfast and was sitting at a table waiting for my friends to show up and Nora wound up sitting next to me. And the next thing you know, we were talking, my friend showed up, Adriana showed up, and the next thing we know, I'm emailing Nora on the following day and I'm like, you know what, I think I'm really interested in this. Um, I. I was treasurer in Brookfield. Um, mm -hmm. I left Brookfield to actually go to my present job now to be the assistant treasurer collector because I did want to learn more about the collections part of it because most towns are a combined right. um, department. Um, and it's, it's, it's a good job. So I'm very interested and I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So the only, I was just concerned about your um, the education that in that side of things because so that was one thing I looked at closely. So you're finishing up treasurer school or treasure collector school or how does it, it's it's mass treasurer collector school and if you're an assistant treasurer and you're taking the classes and you pass the test you get a certification for assistant treasurer. Okay. If you hold that position but then move to a treasurer's position, mm -hmm. you're automatic it's the same test, so yeah. they automatically change your certificate to be treasurer. Right. Um, I believe it's the same with the collection side as well. Do we I'm just curious, is this something that we find but uh, not to, nothing wrong with your experience, I'm just mm -hmm. asking. Um, is this something that is kind of do you find this often in the industry, people training like this 
to move up versus having, you know, gone and gotten a, 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 some sort of accounting or finance background in, in regular in college or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I whatever. can address that. Yeah. the interim treasure collector. Um, the MCTA offers courses for treasurers and collectors. Mm -hmm. um, most communities require a certification, and typically they give three to five years um, to get that certification if they're just starting on the track. But Lani has been taking classes. She's ready to uh, take uh, one of the exams, and then you know we cover her other classes. You, you need to have years of, of experience and class time to be able to sit for the exams. Okay. So, but you're close to finishing, or you're? So what would happen is this year I would go to the school and then take the test on that Friday. Right. And you hope for pass. You're scheduled for the treasure. It would be treasurer's Treasure. test. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's interesting. And you, you think you'll be okay with the school and the and the work and all? You know, tax selfridge is tough too. Um, <laughs> I think um, any time you set foot in any municipal office, mm -hmm. it's definitely a challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have a little bit of history with municipalities because um, <laughs> I'm really old now. But um, every single town hall is the same, there's different faces. Um, things that are run one way in my town might be run differently right. in this town, so everything is definitely a learning experience. I am up for the challenge to learn. I'm a good learner and I'm excited. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. So uh, for you, Mr. Chair, I also want to just add that um, Joanne has graciously accepted to stay on, so there's a transition period which is you know, she's a wealth of knowledge, which is, is going to help with Lonnie um, uh, get, you know, get situated a lot faster in the position with, you know, Joanne's um, transfer of, of knowledge. Oh, excellent. That would be definitely helpful. If I can follow up on this, how long do you figure that will take, Joanne? That, that would depend on Lonnie. <laughs> um, certainly, um, no pressure. Certainly, <laughs> municipality, municipalities use different software. Um, we use a software in South, Southbridge that's different from the one that she's currently using. So I think okay. the biggest learning curve will be the software. Uh, as far as the functions and the things and responsibilities, they are, they're the same everywhere. Okay. Okay, um, go ahead, Scott. I'd just like to take a second and uh, thank you very much for the info. Uh, for filling in for us. It was a vacancy that was tough to fill yeah. with quality people and a quality person. Uh, moving on to um, the recruiter here. Um, did a great job. You see to impress us every day. And uh, I want you to know that I am going to be supporting you on Monday. Welcome to South Bridge and one of the councils. Uh, and look at what's working together. Okay. Okay. Any, any other further questions or comments? Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to recommend that council approve the town manager's uh, council. Yeah, approve the town manager's appointment of Lonnie. Uh, Creation. Creation. Uh, wait, it's a Creation. As treasurer collector for an indefinite term, effective immediately, pending successful completion of pre-employment physical and background screening and state ethics and. Um, that's it. Second. Second. Okay. okay. All those in favor. <coughs> Thank you. Good luck. Thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this, that, that, this means that we send it up to uh, the town council for next Monday's meeting. Correct. And we'll, you'll, you'll be on the agenda then. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> have a good luck. Uh, good luck. Have a good ride home. Okay. Okay. Item number five: Review and discuss proposed emergency closing of severe for severe weather policy. And is that is that coming from you too, Admiral? Or whom? I'm sorry. I. I sorry. The, uh, sorry. The emergency closing for severe weather policy is that coming sure. from you? Uh, I can speak to that for you. Okay. Uh, so it's just an extension of our current policy. We do have 
a severe and inclement weather policy, but this is more detailed, I think, and more involved. It, it, it's a step-by-step -step guidance on what to do with you know, you're coming in late, if there's a cancellation of work, whereas the other policy is really general. If you look at our, our it's on page 13, 14, um, you, you can tell the difference. Um, this is just an extension of that policy, mm -hmm. which, by the way, was, was drafted by the interim town manager, and I assisted um, with, you know, with that. So. Okay, thanks. So yeah, the um, the only thing I would have liked to have seen would to have been the original policy with then the change or something, so that we just had a comparison. Or or you just noted it, so I wrote it down. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. I didn't. I don't have the regs or whatever it's so under. So we wrote um, town webpage um, yeah. under uh, departments, human resources, under employee resources. But our handbook is there, yeah. and it's page fourteen fourteen because it's like between two pages. Right. No, that's fine. I'm just okay. saying. So just let take note, anybody listening. You know, when we do stuff like that, it's really important. I mean, maybe counsel counselors. I know usually care about that stuff. Is just to make sure that we have a reference, um, you know, whether it's something in red or something completely to the side of it, so we can compare. And my only other, um, as I read it, the only thing that concerned me originally was the D, um, but then I, I just, as long as everybody knows it's specific, that is the cancellation, delay, and early departure of work for senior center library recreation workers on evenings, weekends, and holidays. So I imagine that everything else is normal standard when it's day when it's the regular business hours, hours, business hours. Right. Okay, so at first I was like reading through and I'm like, wait a minute, there, oh wait a minute, let me read that again. Yeah, so, <laughs> but other than that, nothing else struck me, so I think it's fine. Thank you. Okay. Or I think it's, yeah. Okay. Um, were there any comments from the um, employees? Were they consulted, or is this just a, because you said it was it was issued by the interim town manager, so, so we worked one. on it together. Yes, he, he, he drafted, and we all uh, worked together to make the updates on the draft. Uh, and no, we did not consult with the the employees um, because it's really just an extension of our current mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not, it's, it's not a major policy change that you okay. know we would ask for seek input on. Okay. But that's a good question. <laughs> okay. Well, since uh, since we do have one of the ones who's immediately affected, the council and agent director here, do you have anything you'd like to say about? Yeah, we're pretty, <laughs> you know, pretty good, pretty flexible with whether, as far as the senior center goes, when the schools cancel, I cancel for the seniors automatically. Okay. We do open the building because we have to open the building, but we, um, I cancel programs. I don't want them out driving if the roads are bad enough for school buses to not go out. So that's just always been my. My thing. That makes sense. I should want to go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I, I also, uh, it's kind of funny reading it that we actually have to clarify as much as we do. Um, I find that to be a bit sad. I think that's happened over the last uh, five years or so where uh, things have gotten to a point where the town halls closed more than was open. I realize it was the COVID situation, but I mean, when it comes to weather, mm -hmm. I realize sometimes we don't want to open for the public to think that they're safe to come here, and so we don't want to encourage that, so therefore the town hall could be closed to visitors. However, I'm sorry, jobs are jobs. People for years, forever, go out, whether it's to make your coffee or to you know, plow your roads or do something. People go to work, mm -hmm. and I think that a lot of people, yeah, I think that it's important that the town hall be open. It is a business mm -hmm. to do work. There's work that can be done whether customers come in or not, but you know, I think that that should be the in the standard in our community. Whatever town manager going forward, whatever we have, you know, I think the standard should be that the town works when the town is, you know, the town works like the rest of the world, unless there's some bad snowstorm thing where the, you know, the blizzard is and everybody's supposed to stay home because there's a state of emergency. I just don't see that business like the town hall should close. It could close to the public and have that out there as a notification that the town hall will not be open to the public. But I think workers should come in and should um, work like everybody else who goes to, to work on those days. That's, but that's just my personal opinion. So it's a shame, though, that we have to be so explicit now as to when we'll work and how we'll work. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Just a couple of comments. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> say anything you want. I'm just saying it is a business. No, and no, and I get that, but it is dangerous. Oh, we had a police officer nearly 
get quite injured coming in the front door the other day. Mm -hmm. But the parking situation is really more than one, is the main issue. Mm -hmm. So if we have that delays, I mean, we, um, believe me, as department heads, if we have work to do, we're working from home. We're working. I'm, I'm not saying you're not. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking it's about this morning. I'm, as a you know, taxpayer. You know, like, I'm just saying as a taxpayer, right. this is a business. But it is dangerous, <laughs> and there is definitely considerations that need to be made for parking. Um, that is a big issue here. It's very tight. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to allow them to clear the parking lot. So, you know, depending on timing of the storms, I don't think that we're closing down. I really, more than we're open, I think that's a little bit misleading because I really think that's not happening. Uh, just my opinion. There, you haven't been here that long, and there were a lot of closures. Well, COVID was I'm not going to argue the point. Yeah, My point is, is we're a business. People have parking issues all over. Yeah. It's just a business. As a taxpayer, I'd like to see the business continue to run mm -hmm. as normally as possible, like everybody else who has to go to work. That's all. Just saying. That's it. That's I'm not going to debate okay. it. Yeah, it's Scott, then Dave. Um, I agree with what Denise is saying, but I think common sense usually prevails mm -hmm. when it comes down to whether we close or not close. I think when the police department and DPW determine the road conditions for whomever calls them, um, I know that the superintendent of schools or the maintenance director or whoever has to get the, the, the go to, in other words, can the people get the work? Mm -hmm. Can the buses roll? Uh, will the employees, I mean, you have a, you come into the parking lot with a foot of salt, they don't want you here. They want to plow the parking lot. I mean, I'm a, I got, I'm a guy that plows. Mm -hmm. I don't want you out on the street. So I think depending on the storm, I said, you know, common sense will prevail. But I think what Denise is saying has merit as far as a lot of people see one snowflake and, okay, they're going to take the day off. I think we need to be dealing in good faith. We know what we have to do here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, what everybody else is saying. I, I understand that common sense has to prevail. I will just make note for the record that during the pandemic, the town hall was probably one of the only town halls who was occupied by the staff and did a hell of a job because we there was no, I, with an understanding of safety came first, we had to close the doors. We had to close the doors for the safety of not only the public, but also the staff members here. But they were here at work. There was a few individuals that went home just at the very beginning of the pandemic. But the staff in general did a did a great job coming here representing the town and staying open to make sure that the business was done uh, as we expect and what, what everybody said you know taxpayer money went to a good use that that, that through that period of time so i was very proud about how that all went down thank you okay. i'm talking snow closures no, no. everybody keep being a poet i just want to let well, no i said during COVID, it's different right. snow closures yeah. yeah i think i mean um Schools have to close. Like, you know, I do understand that, you know, business has to function. I mean, in it, the policy clearly states emergency closing for severe weather. Um, and, you know, as long as the town manager and the department heads are, again, using common sense, many, many companies um, are aware of, of the changing climate and how the weather, you know, one day is you know, not that bad in the next minute. Um, we have like a severe storm that makes it dangerous. Um, again, as long as our department heads and the town manager are using common sense and they're, you know, taking all of those things into consideration and the work is happening, mm -hmm. um, I think this, if there hasn't been an issue with the policy, then I think it's, you know, it's working. Okay. Any other further comments or questions? Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay. I move that we um, recommend approval. Recommend approval okay. of the uh, snow, uh, the emergency closing. Okay. Second. Okay. All emergency good. closing for severe weather policy. Thank you. All those in favor? It's always important that we read. Wait. Mm. Any opposed? Mm. I said all those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. okay. Number six is to review and discuss proposed changes to the senior work off program. 
So I assume that's why you're here. Is that right? I'm here to right. support Rachel's talk. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll answer any questions and I'll do, um, I assume you all received a packet. Mm -hmm. um, this program, well, through you, this okay. program has okay. been running for over 23 years, has had very few modifications that I can find mention of in any of our paperwork. Um, it's kind of a, a unique program that runs through the assessors. It's kind of like a tax, because it's a tax break program. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm speaking on it rather than Pat. Pat helps me coordinate it. She takes in all the intakes and so forth. Um, so we are currently funding the program through credit on people's tax bills uh, at a rate of $600 annually in exchange for 65 hours worth of work which equates to $9.23 per hour, which is, as you know, far below the minimum wage, and we're required to be paying the minimum wage. Um, so that's what sparked us coming to you for this proposal. But not only that, they deserve it. They work hard, they're fantastic assets in all of our offices. I can attest to that. I know each department mm -hmm. and many other departments have, um, they're invaluable for us. Um, so. I had sent over a proposed worksheet, so it kind of shows you what the current program looks like and what the proposed uh, program would look like. So right now, currently, they get the credit of $600. We're deducting taxes out of that because federal government does not require the program, mm -hmm. so they will tax the seniors on it. State does not. They don't consider it income. Over, I believe, was being taken out as well mm -hmm. through research. Now, determined over does not need to be mm -hmm. taken out, so they do not need that deduction. Um, so, our proposed um, increase would be to 975. We would cover those minimum taxes that now need to be deducted without the OBRA with our overlay account. Um, and so the, they would actually get what the intended program was from the beginning, which is a set amount. They were, it was never supposed to be income. They were supposed to be a volunteer program. But it's just because the federal level, we had to start charging taxes because the federal government does not recognize it. Um, so many communities right. are covering the, t the tax deduction, so this is not an uncommon thing. Um, the community I came from did that, so our overlay account through the assessor's office covers that and I estimate that to be around 1500 um, I could be slightly off, I'm not an accountant or I'm not pay running payroll, but looking at what the deductions were on our previous, on our current people, I came up with that amount. Mm -hmm. um, and there's plenty of my overlay, it wouldn't cause me to raise more in my overlay account. I have plenty of that fund to, to be able to cover that amount. So they would actually get their full $15 an hour uh, at $9.75 annually off their taxes. So that would be an increase of $375 per year for the senior workers, um, which I really think is, is about time. It's 10 years since we've had the last raise for them. So. Okay. Okay, I saw it. No, no, no way. Okay, okay. okay. So a lot of great information. Um, the Division of Local Services had the informational guideline that you gave to us with all the Mass General Laws for the people who don't know. Oh. This is a senior program, as you mentioned. So senior at what age, senior? 60. 60. I couldn't remember what I, what went through. I couldn't remember the years. So for those who are listening now, so 60, um, I think it's certainly, I, I agree with you that mm -hmm. from the 923 to the, to the $15 an hour, um, by working the hours. Now, are we also have in there? Do we also propose a reduction in the number of volunteers? Right, I see. I forgot to mention that. Right, from 40 mm -hmm. to 35. So yeah. that helps the balance, yeah, the, right. the amount of money that it's yeah. costing. Because there, there is an impact to the taxpayer based on the 35 workers. But still, it's a way to get volunteers learning something that the town needs that help for and then also as you said repeat people who continue year after right. year to be part of this program mm -hmm. and so now you have you are you have skilled employees right. in what you're asking them to do so I think that's that's a great way I did notice in there in the law it talked about and I didn't think I knew about this um, the uh, oh, what do you call it 124 hours instead of 125 hours instead of um, Instead of the fifteen hundred, they could do it in lieu of. You could, you could write it off. Um, shoot, what's it called? It's the rest of the program. Instead of if you can't work, 
it There's a volunteer part, part of it. It has to do with um, having somebody, you can have somebody else do your service. So if you oh, are yeah. a oh, disabled yeah. person. Get sick or something. Yeah. Well, no, if you're, yeah, if you are a person who may be a senior who doesn't have the ability to do uh, something that's physical or whatever, so you can put, so you can have a, a surrogate, surrogate. Or, yeah, surrogate or something like that. I forgot what the name, I don't think that's what it's called. Um, so that was really interesting to learn from the research into this. I thought that was really good. So if you're a senior out there, and if you're a senior pair that own the home together, you and your husband own the home, you can split the hours. I thought that was a cool thing too. Oh, I think there was hours or amount of money. That's what it was in here. There was there was something to do with the hours versus the amount of money. Well, because the hours, they have to work the 65 There's, hours in order to get the money. Right, right. or taxes. you can do a straight volunteer, there was a straight volunteer hour thing that gave you the full the full amount. Well, anyway, I'll have to read back through it. Yeah, it's one of the pages. There's local options. That yeah, there were some local options, so I guess that was my question. If, but this is all you were looking to do, is what's on here, yeah. just to change the numbers. Okay, because that was in there. That's why I was wondering if we were doing the local, yeah. the other portion of that. Okay. All right, so yeah, no, I think it's a, it, it certainly is a great program. It's been very beneficial. I've talked to people yeah. myself mm -hmm. who have used this program. Um, it's interesting to know that the feds were taxing it. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that the, te the feds will finally see the light someday and not tax it. However, I, I guess if we're going to cover that portion now, they'll get the full 975. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, it's all good. Right. Okay, I saw, I'd be honest. Good. Sure, yeah. So Rachel gave you the, the other piece of information, which was the reduction of, of the uh, amount of volunteers that would be, um, our, our max, mm -hmm. that would be part of the program, allowed to be part of the program. Okay. She did cover that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dave and then Jasmine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to raise it real quick, um, there's a class 22 for veterans. They can also do this. Right. I, think I don't think the town has ever adopted that. We have not. But, but just a quick question. If, if the town council were to adopt something like that, mm -hmm. would that take away from the amount of seniors? Does it take away from them as well? The only thing I can see is that you know, if there's not a need for volunteers, and it, cause it, God knows, sometimes it's hard to place people. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. one right now that just because of her abilities, yeah. there isn't really a spot for her at the moment. Right. I will hopefully find one before the summer comes, but um, I'm actually searching um, right now. But there, there are sometimes people that they just, it's hard to fit them somewhere, mm -hmm. you know? So now, some of this is like through a lottery system at all? Well, we have a cap, and I think we've never actually reached the cap, so... Not in many, many years. Not Certainly not since I've been involved in the program. Yeah, what I... Because if, if they were to adopt that, I just... My, my concern here is, obviously, seniors probably need quite a bit of to help, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, would that... that the, the seniors suffer by voting on a veterans clause as well. Could you do um, it as a lim as a subsequent? And would that... If they didn't yeah. We would have to find, as long as it didn't take away from the, those duties that they've been doing, and mm -hmm. we had work for them. I was thinking more. It doesn't money have to be doing this building. So so it could be with the DPW, it could be with the parks, it could be. Right, but I'm yeah, saying, but what if they don't? What if you don't fill your slot? So if your mm -hmm. quotas aren't filled with seniors, could you then fill them with veterans? If you put it in in language such as that. I don't, I don't know, know if you could say seniors. Preference being given to seniors or something. I don't think you could legally say that. I don't know if you can. Because, right, yeah. Not a lot of times. Because the law states that they're I'm not familiar with any of the So I don't know how that would, you know, legally would work. I I don't care. You know, if it's going to help people out, I'm happy to help them out. But I think you would have to go through a lot of, not to get off the what's on the agenda now. I'm just thinking the long term. If this comes back up and some, some, People are really, the state's actually pushing it quite a bit to us. And so, to do a veteran. Yeah, it's in class, I think it's under chapter 50, chapter 59. It, it's clause 22. It, it goes off all the reductions from uh, abatement to, you know, your you know disability percentages to obviously uh, veterans that have a certain need uh, and help. So I just didn't want to suffer, you know, make the seniors suffer. I mean, like Rachel said, there are certainly jobs okay. that veterans could probably do with DPW or whatever that our seniors can't do. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. You know, working in the parks or with whatever. So I 
I would think that there would be room for both. You know, and I don't know how, because our schools are receivership, a lot of us uh, volunteers could work in the schools, but, but not regionalized schools, but we're not regionalized, but because of the receivership. I yeah, I had, I had a couple of people that did used to work at the school they department, did. Okay. and they don't have any longer. Oh, really? Okay. Thank, huh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all I had. Okay. Just to yeah. go through. Thank you. Okay. I can see if I can find out more data. Okay, Jasmine and Matisse. Um, so my question, because it mentions that they're, um, in essence, uh, municipal employees, um, what is the process of selecting the seniors? They fill out an application every, they have to do it every year, and then they get approved through the assessor's office. They have to own their property um, or have it in a trust. Um, and they can get the money off their taxes. Um, we do a quarry, that's about it. My second question is, are, is this marketed to um, both senior programs, like the... It's all one itself. senior program. You keep making it separate. It's not separate. Um, the Latina, I do have, well, Severina is one. Um, she she works the program. Okay. Um, yeah, Are anybody, the applications in Spanish as well? Or? I can have it translated. I haven't had that problem thus far. But um, yeah, um, if they're interested, they certainly can do it. Yeah, I was just curious if they're, I mean, I didn't know about this program. It's exposed so, to them. Right? It's exposed mm -hmm. to everybody. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. out so there. It's not, yeah. it's not anything. There's no um, <clears throat> negative, you know, for anyone. For you, but is, is, is the program translated? For other members of the community, to, I guess is what you're asking. Yeah. Are, is there not just the there is not just the Spanish yeah, exactly. announcement in about general. it? No, in general. but yeah, it should yeah. be. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I can certainly yeah. see. I can help you with that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Martina, you're next, and then then Rachel. Just in regards to translations, I I wanted to get all of my applications dual language. Uh -huh. Nothing is available through the state, and I was finding that most people did not want to do it because most people I encounter speak it well, but not necessarily write it well, and that was a really um, big problem. So we never ended up doing it in our in our office. But the state had nothing for us. <laughs> that was like translated by a professional person. That's interesting. Bad, yeah. but interesting. <laughs> but can't Arbor pay for some translation work since it's supposed to be for those? Underserved populations, and well, if you could prove that. that underserved populations aren't getting enough, could we not use some of our funds to uh, pay for translation through a Maybe. company? Yeah, we just throw it out there. Yeah. That's a possible yeah. good idea. Since I know there's a little bit. Okay. 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 We had talked about how it costs to translate before at the clerk's office and stuff. We've had these conversations in the past about costs involved when you can't find someone who's willing to translate. So if you could have a professional do it, or there's got to be mm -hmm. programs one of these days that can do it online. That's I mean, a lot idea. of times you can just Google Translate, and you have staff that are yeah. bilingual that they can kind of fact check. And, right. you know, Severina does a lot of that for yeah. me. Right. She, um, she, however, hates Google Translate. Right. Yeah, I'm telling you, all the time. Say, don't use that. Come that. see me, and I'll do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's usually yes. what I do yeah. when I need to have. Yeah. Um, although Charles did the one that's on the cable access about the exercise yeah. program. Yeah. He did that for me real yeah. quick. So he was yeah. he was awesome for that. Good. I know in the past it's not been an easy sell to get staff members to. To do something off the normal, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. So, I mean, so, yeah. I mean, I do it all the time at the okay. village, so. Mm -hmm. well, right. mm -hmm. Martina? You had your, Martina, you had your hand up a little while ago? Uh, yes, uh, in terms then, uh, of the school yeah. system. So we're still not able to uh, put in volunteers into the school system. Okay. Um, try again in September. Um, hopefully, um, we're supposed to be in the winding <coughs> down phase of receivership, yeah. so maybe um, Good to know. there'd be a little bit more there's open. A lot in the schools, but there's just doing photocopying and well, really, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I know I I personally know the staff would love to have somebody just in the office to, mm -hmm. and that's what we did have someone that worked up there in the office. Yeah, just you know, do paperwork yeah. and... We'll run this to this classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Adriana? I, 
It was already discussed. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Yeah. I make a motion that the uh, council adopt <coughs> changes, the proposed changes to the senior workout program as presented. Second. Second. Okay. Any last comments or questions? Would they also have to take a vote? When would this take effect? Twenty. When next? Or the fiscal period coming? So if we so the next budget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know if we had to do some subsequent vote to. They have the budget, the money off a of year to make sure no, it's all no, accounted. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I'm just curious before we go. Mm -hmm. You said you don't usually hit your quota. Um, how often? How low? How much lower are you? Okay, I have it on the paper. Like about ten. 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 Um, usually you have like last ten year we had 24, 20, 20, between twenty-two and twenty-four out of forty. Oh, okay. This okay. year I'm already at twenty-nine. Oh, okay. So we're, we've gotten a few more this year. I think after COVID, it's yeah, taken a while yeah, to get you, people you back. You were full in the things. past. They, they were full in the past. And, yeah. Yeah. When Mike was doing it, yep. maybe. But since, like, mm -hmm. what I've been doing it four years now. So right. Since right. then, right. we haven't been yeah. full. But that's COVID. <laughs> okay, that's good. Because I know I'm, I'm, in Oxford, they had to go to the lottery because they had so many people for right. Yeah, we've this, never, this well, as far year, as so. I know, they've never had to do that. Okay. Um, something to consider down the road. Down the road, so yeah, yes, because yeah, some people do, do it year to year doesn't mm -hmm. mean that just because they, they know how to get their yep, app in first, right. there might be a deadline. Yep. Yep. Right. I always is have a deadline. To make a process. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Is there a deadline? I, agree. Yeah. I always put a deadline and if people, they're not full, so they come in any time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we do have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Let's see. We are at number uh, wait, number seven. Review and discuss the town's ready for first refusal for two parcels known as Lot One and Lot Two A, Harwood Farm Road. Uh, is anybody here to talk about that one? I can explain. Please, oh please, do. okay. Let me go. Thank you. Okay, please do. I did take a I did took a drive drive by that property and it didn't look it was it was the, the space and when you're just going up there it says space on the right, right? Which is this open space. Oh, the house the one they is are the there house, the yes. The building and house or there's one almost complete or complete. Okay. They sold this without um it was before I came on, but it happens with tracker all the time. Not uncommon to see this. I think it might be happening too often. Yes. Town has the right of first refusal. Um, for any chapter program property. Yeah, I know. Now these building lots were created, but they are abutting Harwood's other lands. So would mm -hmm. they still qualify because they're abutting the con uh, contiguous with his other parcel? So they were qualified as chapter. They were removed, so they're not being taxed in chapter anymore. Um, but the lien is still there. The process never happened when the sale happened because nobody ever notified the town that the sale was happening. So it's not any of our faults. This is something the seller should have said to the buyer. It's in chapter, you need to do something. The attorneys know what to do. But if they don't know it's in chapter, it doesn't happen. It just, it happens all the time. Um, so there's a lien on the property for that reason. So we now have to kind of go through the steps. At this point, it's kind of a mute point. It's more formality. Um, so what we need is the town council to say, we're not interested in the property. There's a document that's notarized, signed and notarized so that it can be recorded. They have to pay a rollback tax, which I've already given them the numbers on. Mm -hmm. Once that's paid, we'll release the lien. They can move on and sell their houses. Mm -hmm. How much are we talking about rollback taxes? Oh, I should have brought the file. I was going to talk on it. I don't remember. It's thousands, but I, I don't remember the number because it's two parcels. <laughs> so I have one number for this parcel, one for the other. Uh, and they're both getting built on? Correct. They both are. Yeah. Um, I always see one of the things that when so it comes this to is what in a title search, this yeah. is how it came up because now they're trying to sell a house, so someone trying to put a mortgage on it. Mm -hmm. Probably a cash sale before, no title was done. They just got an else. <laughs> Perfect. See, the, the, the problem is that we keep seeing these, for years we keep seeing these kinds of Every things. Every town sees these. They're, supposed, they're just, supposed to come to the town before they start building the project. Before, <laughs> technically, and unfortunately, <laughs> I think this we have, have to no do way as a town to know that this is occurring. So what happens I'm when surprised I that this see a sale be. happen, I immediately send them a letter, and I'm like, okay, you need to 
Could give me sign up the payments you're going to be in the program, yeah. or you're going to you need to pay these taxes, the roll yeah. taxes, and I immediately take action. This happened right before I came on board, so I didn't I didn't know anything about it until I got the call from the attorney. Okay. Yeah. But I'm looking at names, and all this could have been the state situation too, where one party didn't realize because it was part of a decision. Possibly. You know, yeah, and they might have assumed they were out because it, they were building laws. And the person that actually had their name on mm -hmm. is now dead. Yeah, and the so I can't family member exactly. has right. land says, yeah, mm -hmm. let's just take care of and it. And that's often when you do see these happen where right. it's not proper process because it's people selling for an estate and family, that don't realize. Yeah. Yeah. You know, very often, it's very rarely fraud <laughs> against the person buying it. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah but. Uh, I feel bad for the builder because now he's going to pay taxes that really the seller is supposed to pay. I just think, I just I think it's weird. I don't feel bad for that one if that's the one that kind of. I don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't pretend her name. Is it on I'm, Mike? I hope it is. Because there was a problem with that lot way back. Uh, that yeah. parcel, that dog. Um, because that's the, the, the uh, development, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You should have to pay more. Because I know, I know, um, it does seem odd that this. It would be even close to being 61A since that project was, you know, approved years and years and years ago. It doesn't matter. Um, you can approve building lots as yeah. long as it's not changing use. So on paper, I can break up that piece of land, that 300 acres, into 200 acre yeah. lots. Yeah. But if in reality it's still sitting there as land and I'm still hanging it, yeah. it stays in chapter yeah. until you change. You right. the shovel has to hit the ground and change has to happen. To pull it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Scott. Yeah, I, I was going uh, to. Sixty-one A land is similar to what we bought, bought. Built the high school. We bought the Belrose family. We had the first right of refusal. We we bought it for future expansion of whatever the town wanted to do with it. They wanted to put sixty-eight houses up there, and we we did a landfill. We stopped it. it. Ended up being the high school. In this situation, the lot was bought. The subdivision was subdivided. Then the lot was bought. And I think that there was uh, no bank involved in the purchase of the land. So there was no title search at that time. Uh, he owns the land, he starts building the house, he gets into the frame and everything that he has into the property. The builder probably has about 200000 tied up into the lot. And then they go to the bank to get a mortgage, and then now the bank, it's mandatory to have a title search. It shows up at that point. Now they have to clear it off. And what Dan Flynn and his partner did in that subdivision, they would take it off one lot at a time. They never swept over the whole piece. And uh, so that's why it hung on lot one and two A. Mm -hmm. So now um, the owner of the two lots have to take it off and take care of the issue. But I know the town has no want for an itty bitty lot like that. We usually get involved in the bigger process. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay. Anybody else have a comment or question on this? No? We have a motion. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion that the town um, not pursue ownership of the, uh, the town not exercise its right of first refusal on the two parcels known as lot one and lot two A, Harwood Farm Roman entertain a motion. Excuse me. <laughs> I did it again. Right. Okay. I would do it. I make a motion that we, that. Yes, the council does not. Yes. Uh, and all exercise first refusal. I know. I keep, you keep, I keep reading backwards. Yes. Okay. Sorry, so I apologize. Second. second. Please. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those in favor. Now they're really confused. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Number eight. Discuss and review amendment to standard operating procedure number fifteen, the capital expenditure policy. Which Mike is here. Um, and the items in the of 10,000 or more with an entire useful life of three years or more, shifting to 10,000 or more with five years or more. Since right. you brought this forward, thank you. Right. So, Adriana is here as well, so she mm -hmm. can also talk to this because she was at the meeting as well. So, what I did is I just printed out the minutes from the meeting okay. on the other agenda item. Okay. So, at the capital planning meeting on January 26th, Karen went back through the details on fixed assets, and she found that there are 700, 1,786 assets, the fixed asset listing in units. Of those assets, 33 have a three-year life. I asked, I gave the reason the ad hoc capital planning committee suggested five years. 
is because the state recommends in their capital impro improvement planning manual and capital improvement planning guide a five-year useful life of assets. Also looking at a lot of other communities in the state, most of them have a five-year useful life of assets policy. Karen said that if the capital committee wanted to make the recommendations, and that is fine, we will send it to the general government with that recommendation. Mm -hmm. She also suggested that we should go do going forward is that we not capitalize something that is less than five years. Uh, Mr. Parent asked, said the only thing that would stick out to him is IT equipment. He seldom sees equipment and software that lasts longer than three to five years. So what they suggested was that if it is less than five years, it just would not become a capital item. Mm -hmm. I asked about the $10,000 threshold. Ms. Hardaway said that it must meet both criteria, 10,000 and five years. Mm -hmm. The question was asked if it would be retroactive. Ms. Hardaway said no. So there was no vote at that meeting. Ms. Hardaway said she didn't think a vote was necessary and that she would send an email to Councilor Steves of our recommendation to change the policy to 10,000 or more with an intended useful life of five years or more. Right. At the following meeting, right. following your I did, I did talk to her at one point, meeting, yes. I said to her that I went and talked to email. you and you said that she said that not to change it. And, and uh, she said, we recommend changing it. Ms. Ms. Harno said that there were a few assets, again, she repeated that were three years. Yeah. I said I did not want to come to this meeting and say that we were recommend changing it if we're not recommending changing it. Interim Town Manager Blanchard said that five years is a lot more normal for most, most communities. Okay. Adriana said general government thought that there was some IT needs for capital funding, a useful life of three years, and uh, Ms. Harnoy says we just would not capitalize those mm -hmm. items. Uh, so I asked about the discussion again, what mm -hmm. are we going to recommend here? All agreed it would be 10,000 or five. Yeah, or or and five. And, years. and, yeah. five, and, five, years. and okay. five years uh, useful life. And so I said I will come back to this committee and okay. tell you that uh, we wanted to change it. I did ask her about that email. Okay. I thought maybe it was before we had met, <coughs> she had sent you that email. I wasn't sure. But we did agree to change it. Correct? Okay. Adriana? That, that's we unanimously. OK. Mm -hmm. cool. So it doesn't have the word and on the second layer. That's, I've heard, I keep reading this. So right. you want to keep the and in there. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? It says yeah. or. So it's, a, it's. It's and. No, it says any. No, yeah. You got the 10, first one up here. or more with an intended use yeah, for like five right. years. Oh, okay, yeah, that's correct. That's okay, I'm that's on, right. I'm on here. I'm reading it right in front of us. I've yeah. just showed you. It says right now the original language is and with and the new language, the amendment, of ten or more with ten thousand and ten more. Ten thousand dollars or more. Should be the comma after more, I think. Just with an intended the useful life. A comma. Yeah. It's ten thousand or uh, more. Yes. And and with an okay, the and yes. isn't here. Uh, That's all I'm I'm being very does, clear. It, it okay. does read that as it would include both. But if you want to add in the end, that's or more it's, money. That's clarifying. That's that's after, clarifying. The, after the word or yes. is or money. Or with an yes. intended. Or money. Right. Where do you see money? Yeah, no, it doesn't, but that's what more. it implies. That's what it is. It $10, implies $10, more than $10,000. No, I understand. And There's with no a and, useful it's life. Or. There's no and. Okay. So I'm, just, add the word I'm just saying at the top add, there's If you want to add an and after the more, that's fine. That's fine. That would be good. Because I mean, so the 10,000 or more is yeah. replying yeah. to the... It's, right here. it's on the first one, it's not in the second. Uh, right. okay. I just want to, right to be clear because yeah. Yeah. I get at the first one... Uh, I, don't know. No, I, right I got the 10 with or more. I, I got think that's a good okay. idea, but then there's no question. About and it. That's fine. Yeah, it's like the shall or shall or, or whatever. Could or would. <laughs> Could, would, shall, should, <laughs> right. would, wouldn't. I don't know. I just saw it there. When you said it, I was hearing... I propose an amended... Uh, adding oh, we haven't made the motion yet. Made the motion so yet so okay. When you, when you, you just make the motion, you start with the and in there. With and with. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Anybody else have any comments or questions? You still thinking there, Denise? No. 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 Okay. Just do it. We have a motion. No. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys are hilarious tonight. Just change the All right, I am going to recommend to, that I, uh, I yeah. make a motion that council, um, to recommend to council 
of the changes for the standard operating procedure number 15, capital expenditure policy, to read any item or goods of $10,000, reading that one, $10,000 or more, and with Oh, and, and with an intended yeah. useful life of five years or more, regardless of funding source. Okay. Sounds good. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. Okay. So that way he has to meet both criteria. No? Right. Okay. All those in favor? That's when you pull the semicolons <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, you should have talked to him. There was a whole lot going on on Ellis Road. Right? Okay. Nice okay. people still there. Still going. Okay. But it is a bumpy road. It is oh, I've been, I've been there numerous times now. Uh, and wait, then wait, I think the next two items on, just because they keep they keep throwing them around a, bit, a little bit. I did sit down, and, as far as item number nine, continue the discussion of potential necessities by law. Um, I sat down, I did talk to uh, the manager a little bit about this. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember what, what the discussion worked out as. <laughs> um, I'm drawing a total blank now. I didn't read that. Um, I don't understand what this is. Huh? Was that brought up at a meeting I wasn't here for? Yes, it was. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. why. I'm well, still very confused about this necessity. Well, the proposal, the proposal originally, just to summarize it, is that it was brought to us by an, an, an older lawyer from, actually, he was from in Worcester. He's trying to get the towns to pass, to re reinstate this old law, state law from 1919 that was repealed in 1978. Mm -hmm. That allows the, but that allows the state to, um, to go after uh, ent business entities that are overcharging the citizens and monopolizing profits, um, essentially. And so the, one of the issues that we had when, it was, when we were talking about it is that Charlie email, I talked to Charlie a little bit about it and he emailed me back to comment on the fact that he's not he's not sure that the state that the towns have legal authority to do it that way. Mm. Um, there are other aspects of state law that are still state law that were never repealed, that have some of the same effects on monopolies mm -hmm. and other control other ways of, of uh, monopolizing business. Um, and there's also in the same sec they're also in the same chapter of the law, although they didn't say much. And so one of the things that I wanted to bring us back up is just to throw this around because remember when, initially when we were talking about it, several people have expressed interest in doing something like this. Some of them here, some of them in other, other boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. um, and the issue is trying to figure out what we can actually do and not do. And so this reminds me of topics we've had in the past that are sometimes outside of the purview of town government and what the needs of the town government do. And if that's the case, then that group of people or persons should get together, should come up with their proposals and things, should get statements by council, say, to support what they're doing that to send. Be, but it is the not the duty it. of the, the volunteers, well, all volunteers, to, to, to take up, unless, I mean, unless you really want to, then that's like a sub thing. That's, and the town could say, yeah, we think that's great, bring us stuff, and maybe not. Maybe there'll be councillors who wouldn't want to vote or would want to vote. But I just, it sounds like something... When I was reading, I'm like, what is he taught? I don't know what he's bringing up with these things, but I was looking through them, and I thought you were yeah. piecemealing was, in your email some of the, some of the yeah. stuff you were pulling out from different things. I'm like, you can't take stuff out of the Mass General Laws and just mix them up and say that's a new law. <laughs> you know, <laughs> know. That would be nice. You know, know. Oh, this part goes with that part now, but it doesn't work that way. Know, but anyway, so I wasn't sure where we're going with this, but now you've explained it. Yeah. I would suggest that it's something that if people are really that interested and up in arms, then they need to, to do some work on it. And and ask you know ask the town or council who represents town to if they would support that or send that like I said there's letters that can be sent to with state reps and senators and right. and move the and move the arrow I'm just not so sure it's yeah you know, I think it's something to take up with with our reps and senators because right. this would be a a state thing and it probably is and, yes and and it Southbridge is. is not known as the bulwark of being out there in front oh, on these kidding. issues. We were the ones who got the registry back in our community. What are you talking yeah, but that about? That was we, our community and our we got registry. A bull with. Well, this is all about <laughs> them. The and they tried to put it in child and pick a few people on over. I'm curious yeah. what the town manager said about it. As I said, he, 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 thinks, he, he thinks we don't have the legal authority to do it. Okay. Right, so that they're in the cell. Um, okay. But as, as far as supporting something, that's something that people can do on their own. That's something mm. that can, 
So I would just know knowing that little bit. I would say it's we unfortunate. Pass on I this. think. I mean, I think we could. I would love to see us be able to do something like that, but I don't know if we can. Well, you're a reporter. Take it up. <laughs> I mean, there might be some <laughs> other buried section of the law that I'm not aware of. Is the laws are about this freaking law. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Um, so that's probably going to happen. Okay. So um, item number ten is discussion of potential repeal of camping bylaws, and that was that was actually something that that came up um, as a side discussion at the last board of health meeting. Because um, they, they, um, Jasmine brought up the idea of the concern that she has seen with um, seeing several camps in for homeless camps in the community. Um, Jasmine can notice. I mean, um, and not you. And um, so, and I, and I, rem and I mentioned the fact that we have this camping bylaw on the books, and it was passed in years and years ago. It wasn't directed specifically at camp sites. It was actually directed at people living in vans at the time. And I don't know if it's been, and I, so I just wanted to throw it out there given the, the current housing situation, and it seems kind of unfair to me that we have this on the books where it would seem to be detrimental to people actually getting the services they need if we have a camping bylaw that they, that they basically have to hide from. Boy, you really want to have this discussion? Has that's this that's been, kind of why I threw it out there. As my daughter said, shall we have tents on the town hall now, on, on the lawn? I don't think anybody's proposing tents on the lot. If you don't but they're have living, anything in place, but they're living, but they're currently living in the, t in the town's to forest and stuff like that. Lands. There are already people living like there are there are temp, that are tent there are tents that are periodically thrown out of coal forest. Yes. I've seen them there hiking. Yeah. And in other places on the outskirts of town where they don't right. have right. any services are these and they're not getting help. Currently and, being actively enforced. I don't think they're going out of their way to I'm do it. They're not going out, exactly. Out I don't think they're course. going out of their way to do it. That's where I think maybe we should leave it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the discretion of the police. If you have this on on file, then the police have this bylaw to use if they feel they need it. And, and we did have issues back then with people living in things that were and having real issues on the streets of. At the time, they were literally living in a van right across the street. Right. Yes. From down hill. I remember that. Yeah. But that was just one particular family. It doesn't matter. That, that, that created this issue. Right. Yeah. I bet there were other people probably living in the woods at the time that were quiet about it. The community, the people, the, the people, the taxpayers and all who keep the streets and keep the peace and all have rights too. And, oh, I agree. And I, I, I'm not disagreeing with that. Totally. I don't think anyone's running in and trying to throw people out all over the place, but I'm that does I'm wondering if we could amend it, maybe to include language where it gives the police more leeway. I mean, it, sure, it's not being enforced right now, but maybe having that language in there and maybe reducing the fine um, might be a way to compromise, like leaving it on but changing some of the language. I don't think we should encourage them. Don't fix yeah. it. Because the second you start bringing it up, Mm -hmm. then, then everybody comes. It's, yes, it's, it's a open sometimes open sleeping dogs should be in their camps quietly. Up. <laughs> I'd be no, curious no, to not. hear from Chief Woodson. It would be that, w that would be I'd interesting. Like okay, yeah, we okay, could do so. that. And it has to be for a police sergeant. I thought that was interesting. I, I just don't know, yeah, where we could not keep some sort of resource that are and then of course you also have the question of you know occasionally in in some areas you have flooding and famine and oh, plagues sure. and pestilence Absolutely. and you have to put tents on campsites so what? Well, with the economy the way it is now, a lot of people are unfortunately losing their homes. Oh, that's a different I mean, thing. We're, we're, not, we're not Los Angeles, but there's huge tent cities in Los Angeles and some of the other major cities. There's a lot more to it than just... Oh, I know that. I know that. I know that. But that's, but that's one of the issues. I would just, be I would just yeah. want to hear from the chief. Because yeah, um, I do share... Um, Maybe you get a letter concerns. back from them instead of making them come to a meeting or something. Yeah, you know, like a, it's yeah. one thing to ask about, or whatever. Right. Or maybe reach out. Yeah. Have a conversation. Oh, I'm, I can okay. plan on it. I'm sure. Mike? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, there is a growing problem with homelessness in this town. I mean, I 
I came across a homeless encampment over behind Henry, Henry Street Field. Uh, the problem is, I think a lot of them are probably drug addicts, mm -hmm. and they don't want to be followed. And I don't think passing a law or getting rid of a law, I don't think it's going to make any difference with them. I do think we need more social service mm -hmm. workers to go okay. in there and help them and not just run the police in there. The police have a lot of their own things that they have to do. They don't really have time for this kind of situation. But it is really a sad situation. The, the, the encampment that I saw, mm. I, I just yeah. couldn't believe it. That all these, and they weren't there at the time. It looked cold right now. Yeah. I mean, they saw me coming. I don't know, but but I did see a lot of clothing. Yeah. And tent and tarps all over the place. So I know that there is a growing problem in South. Oh, yeah. I see. I, I, I hate the woods all the time. I, I see them all over the place. Yeah. About this time. Thank you. That's it. Anybody else? No. Okay. Is there anything else? To, anybody? Anything else? Anybody else wants to bring up? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? Let's go.